Tommy, premium SUV prices are falling faster than Chinese spy balloons. <laughs> That's a good one, Dad. What we have here are two ultra-luxury long wheelbase SUVs that you can buy used for the price of a new Honda CRV. Yeah, so in this video, we're gonna answer a very simple question. Well, should you? And if you should, which one do you buy? A 2017 Range Rover or a 2016 Escalade? Now, if you're wondering how much these cost, we've got the price. In fact, they've got the Monroney right here to the Range Rover. And brand new, it was $112,430. And new, this Escalade ESV was about 90 grand. And at the end, we'll tell you how much of these two behind us cost, because spoiler alert, it's a tiny fraction of that. So let's get right into it. You know, Tommy, these two premium SUVs are very similar. In fact, remarkably similar, but there is a big difference under the hood. Now, the Range Rover has a supercharged V8 that puts out 510 horsepower. Yeah, five liters of displacement. Pretty thirsty, though. The EPA rated this at 16 mpg. In contrast, this Cadillac ESV has a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 with 420 horsepower less horsepower, but a, a quite thrifty 17 MPG. Yeah, but they both have eight-speed automatics, uh, and they both, of course, are all-wheel drive. Yeah, that's right. However, if you're not careful, you can end up with a two-wheel drive Cadillac. So you want to make sure you're, uh, you're buying the right one when you're shopping the used lots. But nevertheless, 510 horsepower gets you a quicker zero to 60 time. This is just around five seconds, which is pretty remarkable. Yeah, and the Escalade is about six. So if you're looking for all out speed, certainly the Range Rover has more to offer. Now, what's really cool about this comparison is both of these cars competed against each other at the same time, more or less. The Range Rover was always a little bit more glitzy and a little bit more expensive, but certainly from a look standpoint, they are both more interesting than a new CRV or Toyota RAV4. Now this is the L405 generation of Range Rover, one of the best looking of all time in my opinion. A very simple design, very curvaceous, not overstyled. It screams elegance and opulence without being over the top. Now at the front end here, we've got this silver three bar grill and of course the uh, the daytime running light LED headlights that Range Rover is so renowned for and the cool thing about these Range Rovers they debuted in 2012 is when production started and you know we're on to another generation after this car but driving this thing around most people have no idea that this vehicle can be had for a tiny percentage of what it was when it was brand new now this is the long wheelbase Range Rover and you can tell that because down here on the door you got the little L and you can also tell that because the extreme length of the rear door. So this is kind of the ultimate limo chauffeur version of the Range Rover um, L405. There's also a short wheelbase if you don't need all that rear seat space. And then out back here, a nice classic tapered Range Rover rear end with a split tailgate, which we'll show in a second. Of course, LED tail lights. Now this vehicle was sold new with 21 inch wheels. We swapped on these 20s to get a slightly more juicy tire on this vehicle. And that's because we want to take this Range Rover off-road. And if you want to go off-roading, the Range Rover is going to be the option because as height adjustable air suspension, terrain response, a low range transfer case, all of these things that make it super good off-road. Now this generation of Cadillac production started in 2014 for the 2015 model year. And just like the Range Rover, there is a new one um, that has replaced this gen. Now there is a bigger difference between this gen, the, the GMT, it's got some funny name, G2XL, something like that, um, that replaced this gen to the new one. You can definitely tell the difference, but it's still an attractive vehicle, large, imposing, satin chrome, Cadillac grill in the front. You've got these LED headlights with the little jewel crystals all stacked in a row and then turn signals located down there on the front fender. Of course the Cadillac which means you got huge wheels, 22 inch wheels and once again this kind of dull silver finish with the little chrome inserts and then I love the look of these ESVs because they just go on forever and unlike the Range Rover this is a proper three row so if you've got a big family you want to carry a lot of folks and things the ESV SV might be the way to go. And then out back, once again, typical Escalade styling, very vertical, squared off. This is like a slap in the face compared to the Range Rover with all of the creases, but the huge upright tail lights there. And then of course, the large chrome grille that accentuates the width and the Cadillac emblem shining proud. 
Oh, Dad, you are looking comfy back there. Yeah, you're absolutely right. This long wheelbase had about seven more inches or has about seven more inches than the short wheelbase. And look at the amount of room I have here. I mean, I can't even touch the front seat with my knees. This is a classic car to be chauffeured in. It's super comfortable. It's super luxurious. It just feels expensive. And that's because it is, or at least it was. It sure was. But Dad, this long wheelbase is only a five-seater. So if you want to carry more folks, you're going to have to get yourself another car. Or you could get, I think in this generation, for a brief period, they did offer a seven-seater as well. But those are pretty rare. Let me uh, sit in the back of the uh, Cadillac, because that is even longer than this car, to see how much room is in the second row. All right, Tommy. Certainly much tighter in the back of the Cadillac. A lot less headroom. A lot less knee room, uh, but how's the third row? Well, it's actually really good back here, Dad. I've got pretty good room, lots of shoulder room as well. And I think we've got three abreast seating back here. So you've got captain's chairs for the second, a bench for the third row. You want to fold down that TV? Yeah. That is peak GM 2010s. Look at that Blu-ray. And you got two on the back of every headrest. You got one, two, three. But wait, there's more, Tommy. Yeah, I got another one back here so I could watch two Blu-rays here. I have a feeling, Dad, that the ones on the headrest are probably aftermarket. But uh, certainly, if you want screens, this Cadillac's got screens for days. I think it came with this, remember, right? You could get these, Tommy. Why? Why do you need four screens for... Well, maybe, maybe the better question is, can you even get a Blu-ray anymore? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the iPad kid generation has made these kind of redundant. All right, let me show you my favorite feature on the Range Rover, or our second favorite feature, okay? Let me show you this, Tommy. Look at that. Huh. Talk about tailgating. I love this. Look at this. You can just sit here at the next football game, or I guess if you're in a Range Rover, at your next uh, rugby match and enjoy a bottle or a glass of Pims. Yeah, but I got some cool stuff on the Escalade too in the trunk. Now this Cadillac may not have that cool split tailgate, but it does have the easy open glass so you can drop your groceries back there without opening the huge rear gate. But uh, push a button, that's gonna glide on open there. And you're right, Dad, it's not as good for tailgating. But look at the space back here and it gets even more impressive when you put down the third row all electrically. Oop, that one got a little stuck. But you get the point. You have like a mile of space back here to carry everything you'd ever want. Yeah, I gotta say, if I was at a football game, I'd much rather be... No, I'd still rather be in the Range Rover. Sorry, this is not very comfortable. But how about towing, Tommy? Well, that's a good point, Dad. So the Escalade, depending on configuration, can tow up to about 8,300 pounds. Yep. But this one, the Platinum with the 22s, is gonna be right around 7,800 pounds, which is roughly in line with what the Range Rover can do. Yeah, the Range Rover can do uh, 7,700. So it depends if your horse is fat or not. <laughs> that might be the way you determine which vehicle is right for you. Now the inside of the Range Rover is just as elegant as the outside. Nothing here is overstyled or very flashy, but it's very well assembled and it's a very nice, pleasant design. This dark wood is the primary material throughout much of the interior. The grain all matches the rest of the inside as well. We have this funny little rise up selector to choose your gear on the 8-speed transmission and then I really like these multi-selection knobs which you use to adjust the temperature but you also push in to adjust the heated seats. Dad, no ventilated seats? Oh, there they are. Of course, come on. A little slow to respond. Come on. Heated and cool seats and of course a heated steering wheel. This is after all premium luxury time. Yeah, but slow to respond is definitely the word of the day inside of this Range Rover because uh, let's be honest this 10.2 inch screen actually looks really good but um, some of the controls are a little slow to get going. Like, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes you gotta push things a couple times. It's, uh, it's a little slow and clunky. Apple CarPlay though, which is great, so you don't have to worry about it. And you know that I really like this interior, especially all the leather everywhere, like on places you wouldn't expect up above the dashboard, across these center panels here. Lots and lots of premium materials. And they have done some very thoughtful features like, look at this, like one, two, Glove compartments, you know, you've also got uh, an, an interior that I think has aged really well. It feels, still feels um, expensive, it still feels premium, and best of all, Tommy, and this is what I love about this vehicle, you've got that command driving position, which basically allows you to feel like you're sitting on top of the world instead of, you know, inside a car. We also have the full glass roof on this car, push a button, slide that open, and then you've got a great view of the world above. 
You know, Tommy, there are a lot of letters that I love when it comes to cars like GT, but there's a letter that I hate. Can you guess what that is? What is that? It's Q. Well, okay. Q is spelled C-U-E, Dad, and it stands for Cadillac User Experience. And the cool thing about Q is it prioritized neither the user or the experience. This was Cadillac's attempt at a full haptic kind of touchscreen slash physical button mixture which didn't work so what we have here are touch sensitive buttons that give a little click when you touch them and it is very unintuitive and it just doesn't work very well eight inch touchscreen display which is okay it's the rest wait, wait, of the wait, buttons. wait i think you're underplaying it it barely works when you're standing still it hardly works <laughs> i know that's where you hide your gun the, you can't say <laughs> that bible. word on youtube what do you mean you you can say gun or Bible. I'm not sure you can. Of course ben. you can. Now, look, it's not an easy system to use. I will give you that. However, <laughs> here's the good news. This platinum trim has way more features than the Range Rover, like a wireless charger. This one has adaptive cruise control, which was an option on the Range Rover that you don't have. Power adjustable pedals, power running boards, um, you know, lane keep assist, that kind of stuff that the Range Rover made optional but wasn't necessarily standard. And the other thing that this vehicle heads has too. Heads up display too. Heads up display, good point Dad. Look at that good old American style column shift. True that dude, it also has this little teeny tiny sunroof. Yeah, sunroof is too small, but the suede on the headliner is nice. And actually, I have to say, I'm really impressed with the quality materials. I mean, look at the full leather dash. Every panel is covered in either leather or wood or both. And this platinum, at least this top trim, feels really nice in here. Yeah, the only cure I like is the dude in Star Trek. That's an inside no <laughs> insider uh, reference. But yeah, this thing was just horrendous. Uh, and... This alone, Tommy, as much as I like the car, this alone would probably give me a lot of pause before I bought this. Fair enough. All right, Tommy, here we are in the Range Rover. Oh yeah. And uh, you know what the magic sauce is here? The questionable British reliability. No, but uh, <laughs> that is certainly something that is a storyline and a narrative that you'll see in half the comments in this video. That's 100% sure that's why I said it then. No, what the magic sauce is, uh, is the fact that when you get behind the wheel of a Range Rover, you feel like everything is okay with the world. Not only that, but you feel like whatever the world can throw at you, be that snowstorms or hurricanes or dust storms, you will be protected in your cocoon of British luxury and will be able to and you'll be able to easily make whatever trip you're making. You are very insulated in this vehicle. You really can't hear anything going on in the outside world. You also sit on top of the car rather than in it, which uh, is part of that command driving position, which gives you a great view out of these large windows. Now, from a comfort standpoint, we're looking at four corner independent air suspension, very softly sprung, and this car kind of just floats down the road. Yeah, it does have an incredible ride. Now, we just swapped the 21s for 20s. That was a small as we can go for more off-road worthy tires because we are here in Colorado and we do want to off-road these and unlike the Cadillac you can actually off-road this Tommy it's got a lot of built-in capability yeah you got the full suite of terrain response rock mode you got uh, mud and sand that kind of thing you got a bunch of different suspension heights uh, terrain response you got all sorts of different kind of off-road cruise control settings so yeah if you do want to go off-road not that I think a lot of folks will but you certainly can do it in the Range Rover um, you could do it in the Cadillac too but you wouldn't feel as confident yeah for sure uh, now of course you know you're not gonna get the entire family in here and all their entertainment uh, this is more of a maybe empty nester car would be a better description of it while that is certainly much more of a uh, the cadillac is certainly much more of a family family hauler for sure no i, I agree and you know um the prices are coming down so fast on these range rovers you know what once was a hundred and twelve thousand dollar car can now be had as we keep saying for the price of like a small compact crossover of course this is what everyone's going to comment you're right you don't get a warranty and if stuff starts to break which it probably will in the long term um you are going to have to pay a lot of that out of pocket which is very expensive in a lot of cases now we've had this car for 2,000 miles and nothing's broken it's been perfect we're going to keep it for the rest of the year drive it a bunch more and see what the longer term reliability is like looking from a driver's point of view this is a lot more fun to drive in other words it's a lot more dynamic to drive so you've got bigger brakes you've got much more sorted suspension i mean underneath the cadillac is basically a silverado 
Which is good for parts and stuff. And towing. And towing, 100%, but it's not as good for complete refinement. So this is quicker, this stops faster, uh, this rides softer, um, and this will spend more time <laughs> at the Range Rover dealership. Maybe, you know, the, the here's the thing about any car. If you buy one that's been taken care of, then it's going to treat you well. And I think this is one, and I believe it belonged to Ashley because her name was in the uh, in the phone directory a number of times. I believe Ashley took care of this, and I believe that in our year of ownership, it'll be trouble free. Of course, I could be whistling Dixie, and you know, on the way home, something like an air suspension a bag could break. But I hope not. Well, we'll see what happens. But you're gonna want to stay tuned. All right, Tommy. Now we're in the Cadillac, and this is uh, she's a big girl, Tommy. Yeah, we are in the ESV Cadillac right now, um, and actually these seats are like lazy boy, lazy boy recliners. They are very, very soft. And it does have massaging seats, unlike the Range Rover. Yeah, it does. I mean, dollar for dollar, you get more features in the Cadillac than you get in the Range Rover. And, you know, that's great, right? Like, adaptive cruise is going to be much more common in the Cadillac than the really expensive option that it was in that Range Rover when it was new. Now, it certainly is not as dynamic. This is definitely more couch-like. And the windows are also much smaller, so the visibility is a little bit more cave-like. I also feel like it's a lot louder in here. Uh, and things are a little bit less well screwed together. Yeah, believe it or not, it is a little bit more rattly, which is a little bit surprising because it's got less miles. However, um, let's talk about the platform. This is body on frame, 6.2 V8, 8-speed automatic, solid rear axle, right? Pr really proven technology that's uh, gonna last probably a lot longer than that kind of complex uh, Range Rover. Yeah, and uh, you know, the price reflects it. So the Range Rover from new is down about 60%. Mm -hmm. What is this down? Uh, it's about down about 50%, um, maybe a little bit more. Keep in mind, um, uh, the the folks that bought this vehicle, we want to give a shout out to them, Cars R Us. Yes. Great dealer. In South. They bought it at a dealer auction for a little bit less than what you're going to get at market value. But realistically, these are going to be like $40,000 in this kind of shape. Yeah, or maybe, you know, a touch over. Um, I got to tell you, Tommy, and this is just a me thing. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite colors in the automotive world is Fuji white which is what the Range Rover is in this white is a little bit more eggshelly and I know this is a subjective thing but uh, uh, there's something about a Fuji white Range Rover that feels elegant whereas there's something about a white Cadillac that just feels a little uh, refrigerator-y. <laughs> I don't know about that then. That's just me I'm just saying. I, uh, I also really like the burble out of that that 420 horsepower V8. It's not very quick but you get a really good little kind of growl out the back end. Look, I, I Small think... block GM. I think the value here is incredible in both of these, but you're absolutely right, especially the Cadillac. The amount of features, amenities, space, space, towing, uh, off-roadiness uh, you get uh, in this for the amount of money you paid uh, is just incredible. And the question is, you know, why don't more people buy this? Um, cut for fuel economy instead of like a brand new mid-size crossover that are like dime a dozen. Well, I mean, look, Dad, this is a enormous vehicle. Not it everybody is. needs this three row. And it won't fit in your garage. And it probably won't fit in your garage very well. <laughs> and you know, people like the the feeling of security that comes with a Japanese brand and a warranty. And that is completely understandable and respectable. You don't get that in this Escalade. I also like the feeling of uh, of uh, bargain that you get <laughs> when you get something like this when it's been so depreciated. Yeah, I feel like I'm uh, I'm in a, uh, in a in a James Bond movie. That Range Rover's a villain car, and this is like the, uh, the CIA agent chasing after the villain. That's what yeah. it feels like right now. All right, Tommy. Before we tell them how much each of these costs today, uh, they both have two critical flaws, right? Q over here uh, is something that is hard to get past, but there is an R word here that is also problematic. What is that? Well, reliability, yep. right? When that Range Rover breaks, both these cars are out of warranty. The Range Rover is gonna be shockingly expensive to fix. Um, whereas the Cadillac is, is kind of just a truck underneath, right? It's a Suburban, so that should be a much more affordable long-term proposition. And the reason we bought the Range Rover was to see if it breaks or when it breaks. And we're gonna have it for a year, we're gonna figure that out. But let's talk about how much these two cost. Now, Brendan's brother-in-law just bought that Cadillac at the auction. How much did he pay for it? Well, it was about $37,000 with 43,000 miles. Um, and how much did you buy that Range Rover for? 
Uh, Forty-seven thousand dollars, but it was more expensive when it was new. Forty-seven thousand miles. But here is the general rule of thumb: both of these cars are forty for forty cars. You can get them for about forty thousand dollars with about forty thousand miles, and in oft often cases now in this market, you can get them for a lot less than that. So definitely keep an eye out. But uh, look, for the price of a top trim CRV, you get yourself a beautiful luxury vehicle that is kind of worrying to own in the long term. But if you budget a little bit extra. I mean, read a lot extra for maintenance. They are fantastic vehicles. Look, the question is, as a car guy or car gal, do you, you know, roll the dice on these two or do you go for a sure thing with the warranty? And for me, I'm gonna roll the dice every time because man, driving either of these, you feel like the king of the road. Well, it's because you have other cars to drive, let's be honest. <laughs> Guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. This has been Tommy. Well, you have another Range Rover, Land Rover to drive. <laughs> <laughs> and Roman, we'll see you on another episode. You can have put two in the shop. Over at alltfl.com. See you guys next time. Ciao.